Jive Walking 2021 Upside Down World Living In Your favorite morning host host 94 Bananas Later It's Adam Jones Thank you, thank you Good morning Good morning everyone And welcome, welcome to the Morning Banana Show it has been a minute. It has been exactly a month and a half, two months, actually. Just going to quickly check the live streams and make sure that we're all on the same page here. You're listening to... Uh, that was further from this cage. Now, I'm checking the live streams here, and it says that we are not live. So let me just double check that. It's like, I'm live, but I'm not live. It's very confusing. Live, but not live. Let's check this out. Feel live. Feel live. Just gonna quickly check the live streams. It's been too long to not be live. It says the broadcast has ended. And it has not ended. I am recording the broadcast. Okay, so in that uh, case, just gonna quickly reset the live stream since it's tried to. I don't know what's up with that, but let's just redo it. Pretty simple. We're going to go live again. And we're back, everyone. We are back doing the live stream. Thank you for your patience. You know, some technical difficulties after this long are kind of expected. Uh, usually I know how to set up a live stream. This is the Morning Banana Show. My name is Adam Josh. We're at number 94. This is the second attempt for a live stream, and it just wasn't working out. So here we are. And my God, if you could see what I'm seeing, the whole thing, this is why I never liked, I never liked Twitter Periscope. Uh, per, I never liked Twitter's version of live stream. I like Periscope's version better. If you want to watch the full intro credits, you'll have to go to YouTube. And look for the uh, Adam Josh uh, um, channel for the Morning Banana Show. We're at number 94. You didn't miss much. You missed some lollygagging in the intro credits and uh, some uh, Heil Fiza. You know, this Morning Banana Show is not going to be dedicated to um, or sponsored by a particular pandemic um, make-believe or otherwise. And I don't particularly uh, plan on getting... I'm not funded by AstraZeneca or Pfizer, so uh, this next portion of our conversation is not going to be brought to you by Pfizer. Hell, Pfizer. So, you know, can we talk about something else? That's kind of where my head is at. It's been a minute since I recorded a morning banana show. Here we are. I'm quickly checking the live streams for the second time because the first time was a total crap show. Just making sure we got volume. Yeah, we are live. All right, well, I appreciate everybody who um, stuck through that little bit of a um, technical issue. I was trying to live stream. It wouldn't go live, and then it said I wasn't live, so whatever. I reset it. Now here we are. 
full version over on um, the Mr. Adam Josh YouTube channel for the Morning Banana Show. We're at number 94. I'm here at the office. It is March, the end of March. We're at March 29th. It's 9.19 in the morning. And my last Morning Banana Show was filmed back in January. And in January, I was saying there was 200 days left. I was saying, as far as American politics go, that um, I didn't vote for either president. I'm Canadian, and I wouldn't have voted for either president. I would have voted, I don't know, Tulsi Gabbard probably um, for president. And uh, it is what it is. And I actually, I was commenting in that video. I was just brushing up on my morning banana show knowledge. I was, in the video, I was commenting how the Capitol, the U.S. Capitol, was locked up. And I thought that was odd. Here we are, like, two months later. It is still locked up. You know, tear down those walls, but not the ones around my house. <laughs> walls have to come down, except for the ones that protect me and my family. And you have to give up. Your AR-15, but like, by God, my security guards have them. <laughs> this is double talk, double standard stuff. You don't want to hear about that. And, oh, by the way, that thing that I said. I urge you to repeat this in conversation when it comes up. Because, have you noticed that we're all walking and talking billboards for pharmaceutical companies lately? Just throw it out there. This portion of our conversation brought to you by... Pfizer, or AstraZeneca, or whatever your favorite brand of vaccine is. Like, Big Pharma has hijacked the average Joe. Big Pharma has hijacked the average Jane and the average Muhammad. <laughs> and we're having these conversations that are walking, talking commercials for Big Pharma and pharmaceutical companies, if you didn't notice. And I noticed, and it irritates me, somebody who's had to deal with marketing, somebody who's had to... Uh, create ads, be in ads. I've been in a commercial. And I, I, I'm watching this unfold, and it's just we are walking, talking billboards and advertising campaigns for Big Pharma. And at least, at least, can we point it out? Heil Pfizer. At least, can we point it out? It's uh, a little, a little over the top lately. Uh, so, what else can I tell you? You know, I don't have forever with these morning banana shows today, a little bit more so than uh, than usual maybe, but battery life on uh, camera two over there is not going to last forever. There was a morning banana show, I think number 91, where I was saying, probably number 92, where I was saying that we were looking to Texas, looking to America to lead us out of this. There's people in Texas that may lead us out of this. Brave souls. Those people in Texas. I'm going to try to call one. I know people in Texas. We're going to call somebody in Texas and see how Texas is doing. Or if they're awake. Let's see if Texas is awake. Take my word for it. Texas is wide open. Now, the, the tricky part about uh, Texas is that because they have so many, you know, corporate private businesses there, um, the private businesses have towed the line with the rest of corporate America. So uh, you walk into uh, Costco, into a Starbucks, into a Walmart in Texas, and it's kind of the same. People are paranoid about uh, wearing masks and whatnot, but... The state as itself, like by itself, is uh, open and uh, there's no mask restrictions. 
Now, some people I talk to <clears throat> say that that's because Texas is entirely vaccinated. This portion of the conversation brought to you by Pfizer. <clears throat> Whatever the case may be, a lot of people are moving to Texas, and I gotta admire them, I gotta hand it to them. Um, how long are we going to allow ourselves to be bullied by nerds? We are being bullied by nerds. These guys that you saw in high school that you would have broken their arms like twigs if they tried to threaten you are running your life right now. Your life has been hijacked by nerds. <laughs> people that... People that grew up afraid of you, probably afraid of themselves and their own shadows, and now, for whatever reason, are behind the lever levers of control. I mean, I'm not going to start naming names, but you know exactly who I'm thinking of. These people... You look at them, are you afraid of them? Come on, nobody's afraid of them. Now they're like, well, I'll show you, I will show you, I will show you the power of my computers. <laughs> it's like a evil villain, a cartoon evil villain. I will show you the power of my, of my computers, and I will show you the power of my needles. My needles and my computers are coming after you. <laughs> Slither, slither away. What else can I tell you? The stock market is opening up in five minutes. Let me tell you about the stock market. So last time I talked to you about uh, my stocks, I was saying my stocks are doing, you know, they're making their way towards the targets and yada, yada, yada. Uh, the market overall has took a bit of a plunge since then. So um, my honest advice to new investors uh, new investors is to not chase. My, my honest advice to new investors, which I talk about quite a lot, is to index the core of your portfolios and dedicate a portion of your portfolio. For instance, say you have a thousand dollars, which is a low ball figure, but say you have a thousand dollars in your entire portfolio, right? Your portfolio being your investment container, everything in your investment container. So say out of that thousand dollars, you dedicate 10% or $100, you dedicate that to your aggressive swing trading, your aggressive day trading. But the core or the lion's share, the bulk of it, I re would recommend that you index it. Find a low cost and if, if not zero cost index fund like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, uh, an international or total stock market index one or two maybe three and if you want to keep your money in a in something but in a fixed state with a, maybe a low interest rate bonds canadian bonds u.s bonds t-bills or uh, you can find an index of bonds i'm in canada so we are so bent over in canada if you're in america watching this and you're in the stock market you have no idea you have no idea we pay 9.95 on average per per trade you believe that? You guys are just like, oh, I just put my money in here, put my money in Tesla, put my money in this, I'm buying this. Like, when I put my money in something, I gotta consider, okay, I have to pay $9.95 just to get it to that stock. And then to get it out of that stock, another $9.95. So, you guys are lucky. So, I index the core of my positions, and then you're only getting your fair share of the market. Whether the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow, whether it goes up or down, you're in that boat with everybody rising and falling. So you'll notice that, uh, for instance, if the NASDAQ, the overall NASDAQ index, has gone down, you'll notice that all of your tech stocks are also down because they're contained within the NASDAQ. Does that make sense? The S&P 500, and this is why they have tickers of the S&P 500 and on the bottom of the screen, because people are like, well, okay, <clears throat> people understand this, that if the ocean itself is like down, then the boats in the ocean cannot be up. It's very rare. That being said, because it's a worldwide stock market, you can find Chinese low float stocks that for some reason, the black box computers that uh, the Asians are running right now, <laughs> the Chinese people that get in on this, they want to, um, if they want to get in on pumping and dumping a stock, 
Uh, sometimes it'll have an after hours, so you have to be on like something like Weeble or something that trades after hours. Uh, different platforms trade uh, pre and post market hours. But uh, again, that's chasing. You never know what what stocks, are, what Chinese stocks are going to get pumped. But I've been noticing a trend the last little while of Chinese stocks, and now it's NFT stock plays. Before that, it was cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency, uh, my advice, which you know you might not want to listen to, but my ideas would be um, to get into to companies that build the machines, companies that that actually build machines that. Uh, get that blockchain technology would be built on. That is, to me, is a safer bet than the individual companies that may... Um... Like, if you put all your money into Ethereum or all your money into to Bitcoin, well, I've had... I have went on a Bitcoin trip and rant before a few times, but, like, one of the main reasons that people use currency is because it will hold their value. Like, a dollar of the U.S. dollar will retain its value. Um, sitting there in paper, uh, you know, a week later, two weeks later. So sometimes with digital currencies, they literally are only as valuable as the moment that you traded them from one person to another, and then their value changes. Ideally, it goes up in value, right? That's ideal. But but a lot of times, if you've been in Bitcoin for a while, you can you can attest and say, Adam, yeah, you know, you know what, you're right. For the overall, it's gone up. But there's been times where I've lost my shirt. And this is the problem, is like, you can't say that about any traditional dollars, and that's well, why people are kind of apprehensive about it. So, unless we're in a third world country or something, or like shoveling wheelbarrows full of bills to buy a loaf of bread, I mean, that's extreme examples. But on average, I would say the Canadian dollar, it retains its value. So as an item of trading currencies, trading with somebody else, you would want something that retains its value, especially if you're paying off a debt or incurring a debt. You know what I mean? Borrowing money and then, <laughs> yeah, I need to borrow some money from you. I need a thousand dollars to buy a car. And then you arrange a loan in Bitcoin. You get a thousand dollars, comparatively speaking, to a Bitcoin, which would be a lot less than one Bitcoin. And then imagine that the price of Bitcoin sinks the next day and you're going to buy a vehicle with that $1,000 uh, based on Bitcoin. And now that $1,000 is worth 100 So you've lost the value of your Bitcoin. <laughs> that happens to people. I don't even think I'm talking crazy. But um, so, like, I need, say that this is a dollar. I need this to be worth a dollar when I hand it to you the day after, the day after, it still needs to be worth a dollar. It needs to retain its value. And the problem with NFTs, non-fungible tokens, the problem with um, digital currency is uh, who knows what the value is. But, you know, this is the future economy, right? Digital economy, whether we like it or not, we're all being kicking, we're all being dragged kicking and screaming into it. I've said my position and my piece on, on Bitcoin and, and that type of technology so so many times, but you know, getting into companies that build the machines or getting into blockchain companies is a little bit different. What else can we talk about? I've been working out for six months, six months and twenty nine days as of today. I started doing twenty ones on biceps instead of regular curls. Well, 21, you go up to a certain point, one to seven, four, five, six, seven, with whatever weight you're using, right? Next is up and drop down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on that same imaginary line point. The third, third set, third part of the 21 is you go all the way up seven times, full range, more workout. So, that being said, still the hardest thing that I'm doing, I find, is the burpees, of all things. The burpees, I do 20 burpees, and to me, guys who can do 100 burpees, kudos to you, because but to do them in a row, I, at 20, I'm like, I just want to sit down. I just want to sit down, and I've been doing this for six months. Six months and 28 days I've been doing this. And still, 20 burpees is a killer. Harder than 21s. Harder than sit-ups, harder than push-ups, for sure. But um, 
Yeah, so we're here in here in Niagara. We're in code red, soon to be in code gray, apparently. And um, I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the details of that again. This portion of the conversation is not brought to you by Big Pharma. So um, you, we all know the world that we're living in. If you're in Canada, if you're in the United States right now, and I don't need to endlessly talk about it. Um, <clears throat> We're in this code of whatever it is, section pink, section brown, I have no idea. It's a whole bunch of crap is what it is. And uh, so the shop here where I'm at is still closed. <coughs> I'm still on EI, believe it or not. This is not work. I'm not working. I'm not getting paid for this. Um, so I'm not uh, collecting income paid or otherwise. Um, I have investments and, you know, I would tell the government. The government knows about my investments, by the way. So, um... Yeah, I'm collecting EI, uh, do, doing homeschooling. Frankly, Desiree's position and my position about school is like, we are not sending our kids back to school if you are forcing them to wear a mask for six hours a day. We're not going to do that. That's our bottom line position. Our other position is that we're not going to have our kids go to school and come home and be like, oh, they tested us today for coronavirus. We're not doing that. So... A lot of people feel the same, a lot of people are homeschooling right now, and eventually, you know, eventually we're going to have to stand up to the nerds who are trying to run our lives. And until then, uh, this is what you're dealing with. Nerds on power trips, which I've talked about before over the years. But you let these people control your lives, you're, you're never getting it back. At some point, you just have to say, like, let's go, this is ridiculous. No. Say no. But... Desiree and I have been talking about moving, but where would you move to? We have three, three options. First off, that came to our mind: Texas, Costa Rica, Germany. We're talking about that in an ongoing conversation. So, if you're from my city or if you're from Niagara and you're watching this, I just want you to know: I'm willing to stay. I'm willing to hold my ground. I'm willing to do whatever to push through it. But when I have kids and you're inconveniencing their whole lives, I'm at the point where I'm ready to break up with my city. I'm thinking about breaking up with my city. A little bit. Entertaining the conversation. <clears throat> stupid is as stupid does. And, um, yeah. Eventually, you know, there's other places in the world to live. So let's start with that. And uh, I am, I have an American mom, so if I needed to go to America, I guess I would be able to do that. But a lot of inconvenient things, you know, a lot of weird and inconvenient positions that I would be forced into. Like one of them is to sell the house that we just bought three years ago. I didn't buy a half a million dollar house just to, just to sell it three years later. That wasn't my intention. If I wanted to flip houses, I'd flip it with the family business. We do that. We've done that. We've sold two houses two houses in the last uh, year. Uh, one in Brantford and one here in town. And uh, if I felt a way about flipping houses, then uh, we would have been doing it. Um, not not particularly. It's a, I mean, it's a lot to flip a house. But when you're good at it, you're good at it. Two in a, two in a year. Again, I have not been uh, making any money from that, but I was there, man. I was there. You know, when I was doing the rentals, I was making money. So, if I was smart, I would go in on when it sells. I want a chunk of that, but you know, people think in terms of I want to get paid. <laughs> I want to get paid now. Anyway, everybody, that's the morning banana show, number ninety-four. I don't know how long we can go before my uh, thingy cuts off here. My battery dies on one of my cameras. So we're going to listen to on the way out. Say goodbye to the zero from the album Everyone Dies. I recorded this back in 2005. Say goodbye to the zero. I'll be back. For another morning banana show. I just came in here to do this for you guys.
and uh, I'm going to go back home now. I would try to do, mo I've tried to do morning band shows from home, but it's, it's difficult, so I came to the office to do it. Uh, follow me on Twitter at AdamJosh.com. My website is AdamJosh.com. That is the name my mama named me. And, uh, yeah, I'm here, I'm in town, I'm in Niagara, doing the things, and, uh, staying at home, grade two teacher, unpaid, grade five teacher, unpaid, been hanging out with my kids a lot, I like the time hanging out with my kids, don't get me wrong, I like living in a house that I paid a half a million, or paying a half a million dollars for, I like that, don't get me wrong, but I can't help but fight the feelings. <laughs> But something is not right in the world right now. <laughs> something doesn't feel right. And I'm not sure what it is. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Bye-bye.